Today, I'm going to show you how to combine our new techniques in the right hand and the left hand. And we're going to do that by the use of a major scale. So today, what we're going to do is learn the perfect way to play a one octave major scale. So dive in and let's see how to develop this technique. Today we're going to start combining the technique that we've developed in our left hand and the technique that we've created in our right hand and we're going to put them together and understand how best to find the most consistent way of combining right and left hand fingers. The best way we can do that is by taking a simple one octave major scale. The reason I'm doing this is because all our musical experiences are going to be involved in playing notes around a particular key and that is going to be around a major scale in whatever capacity that will be. It also allows me to focus on bringing the hand out of the wider frets of the first position and to bring it up to our fifth position here. Okay so we're now going to use this and we're going to implement our perfect one octave major scale in the key of C major. C, our starting note, our root note is C, and it's located here on the fifth fret of the third string, and we're using our first finger. That is our root note in the C major scale. Keep the spacing of the first finger, and we're gonna bring our third finger down onto the seventh fret of that string. That note is D. We're one step up. That's one tone up, so therefore two frets. Now, while we move to the next note, we're moving to the next string, that's the second string, and we're gonna find the note E. We're still in position, so that's the first finger. E, F, and G. That's on the fifth, sixth, and eighth fret. So far we have this. C, D, E, G. While you're playing them, focus on naming them as well. C, D, E, F, G. Now we bring the notes of the first string to play, and that's A, B, and C. Now notice in my right hand, I'm using, I'm keeping the thumb on the sixth string, and I'm using an apoyando, that's a rest stroke, and we are using I and M, using a rest stroke to dig in. We've established that technique. Now we've also discussed about the brush technique and the brush technique is where you start with the finger off the string because we want those sound waves to resonate and to sound through all the way up to the point of contact with the next note. The moment I lift the left hand off, the sound stops. The moment I place a finger on that string, the sound stops. We want the right hand and the left hand to synchronize perfectly in time. This is where we start combining left and right hand technique efficiently. So, finger, place it, prepare, and play. Again, fingers off the strings, we're gonna combine everything, think it through. We've got the notes C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Take the time to locate those and get those in place. Then what we're gonna do is start thinking about our right hand and left hand synchronizing together. Start with the index finger to play the note. We're using brush stroke. First finger's already in place on the C and we go and strike the note. Let the notes resonate. Prepare the third finger on the next one. Middle finger's ready to go because of that walking action. Pushed it forward, projected it forward and we play the two exactly at the same time and bang. Anticipate the next note. I'm keeping my third finger down. Don't lift it off. That's why we need the note ringing on. Prepare the first finger onto the next note, E, second string, and index fingers forward already, look at both hands, and then play it. Now I'm talking it through so the notes have died by the time I've got to it, but I want to explain it clearly how my thought processes are and how your thought processes should be. So now we've got the second finger prepared for the next note. Middle finger's above the note. I'm not resting it on the string and they both go down exactly at the same time of contact. 
prepare the fourth finger. Index finger forward, play. Prepare the first finger, keeping the fourth finger in play. And play. It comes off, the fourth finger comes off the moment you make that contact. So the synchronization of this hand and this hand, as I play that first finger, the fourth finger comes off and the right hand plays the note. Everything works in synchronicity. Third finger and then fourth, prepare. Notice I've also kept those fingers down on the strings as I've gone up. Then lift off one at a time and time the right hand with the left as I lift off. Now, as I get to the first finger, I'm preparing now my fourth finger on the next string and my right hand's ready to go and then play as I lift the first finger off. Then second finger, then first. Prepare the third, first finger still down, ready to play, bang. And then the first finger comes up for the last note. So let's watch that in slow motion. The note's ringing on all the way through. Time it all exactly at the same time. Feel the nail contact with the string. Anticipate the next note. Don't rush it. Think of every move and wait and time it exactly. That way the sound waves run straight through. It sounds smooth. How many guitars do you hear play? don't want that, we want the notes ringing on. This is the one most important technique that changes you from an inter a basic beginner level guitarist to an intermediate level guitarist. Being able to incorporate the right hand and left hand techniques to be secure and let those sound waves run on to the next note, that's the important thing. How can we develop this exercise further? Once you've got that technique in place, start using M and A, then I and A then I M A M, combine all those right hand techniques that we've done in previous exercises. Such an important way of establishing the perfect major scale. That way we can... This is how we develop our improvisations. scale. Great thing about the C major scale is by transitioning it up the guitar we can transpose to a different note. I've moved and my first finger is now on D on the seventh fret. I've got a D major scale. E flat. Plenty to be getting on with. I look forward to seeing you next time. All the best. Good luck with that.